Hello everyone, welcome to the Community Classroom. This is Dr. Tracy McCarthy, psychologist, attorney, and educator, and we are back with the lessons in political psychology. And as promised, we're going to look at the political psychology strategy model of the African Immigrant Caucus. And as always, if this video appears on anything other than Dr. Tracy McCarthy, it is stolen and unauthorized. Let's get started. And as we look at the work of the African Immigrant Caucus and their strategy, uh, you'll notice a few things. Uh, first of all, they are non-Pan-African in their focus. Uh, they actually focus on having a collective political voice in unity, but within their own collective. And so there is a focus on power within the United States. They have a concrete action plan. They have an exclusive membership and an exclusive focus. They also have a very long game strategy. There's a lot of collaborative support um, in terms of their resources in the real world offline. Uh, they also are a very decisive movement, very self-focused, um, and there is a significant amount of division. There's a lot of talk about division and divisiveness, but they have a significant amount of division uh, regarding their self-needs and their sustainability. Another thing to note is that they have a single point focus, and so there is a focus on African immigrant goals and uh, focus on the needs of the African Union inside of the American focus. And we're going to wrap this up with a look at what CARICOM is doing in order to increase its vote and its voice in the American political framework. We're also going to look at the decreasing voice of those who are identified as native black Americans or foundational black Americans in the United States with respect to Congressional Black Caucus. And then we're going to also talk about the issue of gaslighting of the American public. And here you can see that uh, they are identified as a very mainstream collective voice. So this isn't a fringe movement and it's not an online movement, although they have an online presence. It's a very mainstream movement and they are centered in the seat of power, which is the Metro DC area. And what their goal is, is to uh, create a network of African immigrant institutions. And they are coming together to affect change through the very power of their numbers. They have been in existence since, two, since 2013. And what they are doing is using their voice and the power of that voice by uh, using the resources of clergy and business and, uh, you know, the political system in general. And they are equating their uh, process and their movement to the movements of Asians, Hispanics, African Americans, and Jewish Americans. And so ultimately what they are saying is, is that African immigrants in the diaspora uh, need a voice in the political system of the United States. And as you can see, their focus is on African immigrant unity. And so this is unity uh, across the different African nations. And so there is no uh, specific exclusivity regarding that. The exclusivity is the African immigrant exclusivity. And so it is focused on the African countries on the continent and them having a voice in the American political system here. And one thing to note is while a number of people might be playing the game of checkers in terms of politics, uh, the African Immigrant Caucus is very focused on power. And so they are playing chess in a game where many people are still playing checkers. And let's quickly look at their plan of action. And uh, this is a, a great model in terms of a plan of action for any collective. And so their first uh, objective, their main focus is the building of power. That's number one. And so they say that they are building the African immigrant power across ethnicity, language, tribal and national affiliation, and political party. And so for them, they are breaking down any boundaries in Africa that would keep them from coming together to have a collective voice in America, in the American political system. 
Uh, their second thing is they are focused on determining what their specific needs are. And so they are focused on determining the most important and urgent needs of their people uh, through grassroots processes. So they're listening to they are listening to congregations, organizations, uh, neighborhood groups. They're listening to all of their people to make sure that they have a collective understanding of the needs and that there is a collective voice for all of those needs. And number three, you can see that their focus is on creating demands. And so they are creating and presenting concrete demands based upon these sessions that they are having with their entire community at the grassroots level. And so uh, sometimes you'll hear people talk about excluding different parts of a particular community in America. Um, and that might not be a wise uh, decision. And so there's sometimes a, you know, sort of ignoring what the older people have to say or ignoring what the younger people have to say or ignoring what, you know, particular groups have to say, the church has to say or the mosque has to say. And so it may not be a wise uh, political strategy to ignore the voices of whatever your collective might happen to be. And number four is they are taking action. And so that action involves gathering African immigrants for assemblies with elected officials to inform the elected officials uh, what their needs are and then to demand action and then uh, make concrete demands that are determined based upon these grassroots listening sessions. And finally, their focus is on holding those elected officials accountable to meeting their needs. And then you might want to pause here so that you can actually look at their action plan. You hear a lot of talk in Pan-African discourse about uh, the issue of foundational black Americans being exclusive and divisive. Uh, however, when you were talking about constructing your needs and asserting those needs, a certain amount of exclusivity is necessary. As you can see here, it's a very exclusive uh, dynamic, a very exclusive political strategy. And you can see here the actual uh, leadership and board of directors for the African Immigrant Caucus. Again, this is an organization and a political strategy that has a long game strategy and you can see their board of directors here. And one of the important things that they focus on in terms of acquiring this political power in the United States is making sure that they support their own candidates to get them into office so that they can have some sort of political sway. So they don't just accept the Congressional Black Caucus as their voice. They actually have created their own voices in the political system. And again, they are making very decisive moves, both politically and socially and economically. And um, you can see that one of the things that they are um, you know, very proud of is the Africa Now and the uh, new announcement that there's going to be a new African Basketball League. And this is in collaboration with the NBA and also President Obama uh, is participating in this. And along with their political strategy is a very self-focused strategy. And so there is a focus on their numbers. And so they are keeping, you know, really good track of their numbers. And you can see that they have uh, the data on the African-born population in the United States and its increases since 1970. And so you can see the increases have been exponential. And also uh, it's important to note that increases in power come with increases in numbers. So the more people that you have in terms of whatever your political strategy is, the more power you will likely have.
And you can see that their focus is on building power, particularly in the metro D.C. area. And one of the things that they note is that while the number of African immigrants in the United States is large, their community does not have a sufficiently strong influence with political and corporate leaders that they believe they deserve. And they are endeavoring to change this fact. So one of the goals is they want to be the leaders in terms of the African immigrant voice across the country, starting with the D.C. area. And they are saying that they deserve a seat at the table and they deserve to get their needs met and have their voices heard. And one of the important things that you should note is that they note that political power matters and politicians take notice when large voting blocks work together to impact them. So they have an entire process and a strategy related to the ballot box. Again, they have a very single point focus. And so it doesn't matter where they are coming from in Africa, their focus is on this collective. And as the voice of the diaspora, what they are showing is, is that they are definitely playing chess versus checkers in terms of their political strategy. And one of the ways that they are doing this is having an African Union in America focus. And one of the things that is keeping many Americans from uh, exercising similar political psychology strategies is the uh, psychological manipulation of gaslighting. Many Americans are being uh, what is known as gas lit uh, through the process of gaslighting and what gaslighting is basically it is a psychological manipulation and what it does is it is structured uh, by those who are using it to sow seeds of doubt in the individual or the collective and what's happening is is with these psychological manipulators they are causing those who identify as black americans african americans indians they are causing them to question their own right to a political voice and representation and the tools that are being used uh, include things like denial of the concerns and the needs of the uh, foundational black Americans uh, you have also misdirection a lot of this is going on online as a matter of fact um, you also have destabilization and delegitimization and you also have these processes of contradiction and so uh, you'll have people say things like uh, African Americans or black Americans or Indians they don't need to have any rights in America what they need to do is leave America and so you'll hear this theme of get out uh, for foundational black Americans In terms of political strategy, uh, some things that people might need to start asking themselves are who is it that speaks for you? It doesn't matter what your demographic is, but particularly if you are considering yourself African American or foundational black American or Indian, um, one of the questions you need to start asking is, and we're not talking about on the internet, we're talking about in the real world because politics is a mainstream real world dynamic. And so where is your voice? Who is speaking for you in the mainstream real real world in terms of your economic sufficiency in terms of your educational needs housing land small and large businesses your farms your, your technology security and safety right here in America who is speaking for you in terms of your well-being where is your voice regarding equal protection and your rights the African immigrant caucus their psychological political strategy is power and they have a long strategy going on and so the question is what is your long strategy where is your collective political voice and pan-africanism cannot be your collective political voice uh, that is not a part of a long game strategy where is your self-focus And one thing to note is while uh, many American leaders 
are refusing to meet with the president of the United States. Many Caribbean leaders are more than happy to meet with the president to assert what their needs are and to have a collaboration and a communication about how they might get those needs met. And so the question remains for many of you who are in America, who is your voice? Who is speaking for you? Who is meeting with the president on your behalf? And CARICOM has reported that they've had a very positive uh, interaction. They said it's been a very long time since leaders of the region have actually been invited to meet with the President of the United States of America. And they see this as the beginning of a much broader initiative in relation to America and the Caribbean. And many people believe that they can simply uh, not have their voice heard and their voice will somehow be heard uh, in America. But the fact is, you look at the old saying, a closed mouth does not get fed. And one of the major uh, obstacles to achieving this uh, political voice and having this political psychology strategy is that many people who are identifying as foundational black Americans, native black Americans, American Indians, one of the problems is this, this issue of identity. And so as long as people are unclear about their identity, they don't know uh, what the lines of demarcation are in terms of who are going to be their quote unquote allies and who might be their adversaries. Uh, we've talked about this before. And so you need to know who you are in order to figure out what your collective needs are and who you have collective needs in common with. So there was a recent video related to the American descendants of slavery, uh, their needs and issues and them being inseparable in terms of the American Indian issues. And that's not all American Indians. It's certain groups of American Indians, uh, many that are considered the uncivilized tribes. So getting a better understanding of your heritage, whether it's a, an indigenous heritage, whether it is an African heritage, whether it is a European heritage, or whether it is some sort of conglomerate, um, you need to get a better understanding of that in order to better understand what your political psychology strategy needs to be. And again, while uh, playing on the internet may be helpful for some purposes, at some point in time, you know, people will have to get into the mainstream. Remember, knowledge is power. Take care and see you soon.